Hi folks, Dino Bob here, back in Betatu Park, and we're completing the Hadrosaur Hangout uh, exhibit, uh, having built the overview platform last time. Uh, this time we're starting with transforming some of the uh, terrain around the viewing platform and uh, putting in some buildings, uh, excuse me, plants, and we will be putting in some buildings. Uh, we, the hadrosaurs have to have a house. Um, trying to save some pieces by putting entire trees into the ground to represent bushes. One of the things you will see, I'm going to use a trick on the tree removal brush. If you select the brush and then choose a particular kind of plant that's happening right now, you can er selectively erase that kind of plant. So I took out one of the um, palm trees for this native environment uh, because it shouldn't be hanging around in the environment we want these animals to live in, which is uh, basically a coastal environment. And then I could replace that density or and individual trees with coastal type vegetation to get a more consistent habitat. I do not have video for you of putting in fencing uh, and the barriers uh, from the building set that I had used to encapsulate the exhibit and keep the animals in because uh, I didn't get that. To build the hadrosaur housing thing, I first started with the um, same building that I had used for the Nasutoceratops exhibit, which is right next door, and decided I would expand it. Uh, this proved to be problematic. Uh, you will notice when the grid shows, it is not square to the building. And this caused no end of headaches in lining things up and getting things to uh, be a good place. Um, and it just wasn't, uh, wasn't a pleasant experience to build that way. It particularly got to be that way in building the transfer pen that uh, is going to be outside the building and you will therefore see that uh, I build the pen and then that's not what you're going to see in the final habitat. Uh, I have a short tour type bit coming up of the replacement of that pen that I also don't have video for uh, because I forgot to hit the right button when I was building it elsewhere when I where I could build it on a grid and then just rotate it to match the building. Uh, so this one is still gray, the gray cinder block that I used on the Nasutoceratops. I have to move the, the keeper facilities around and make some adjustments like I'm doing here on the fence to make it more suitable to the taller animals that the hadrosaurs are. The um, Walls, of course, had to be taller, and you saw that, and the the entrance needs to be taller for the hadrosaurs. Uh, but I wanted to keep the overall feel. Uh, it just, um, you know, maybe it was built at the same time, maybe it was built by the same contractor later when they added these uh, more uh, expensive animals. Who knows? Uh, but I did want it to look like it belonged right next to the building that it's sitting next to. In the course of doing this, I realized that by using these groups of uh, prop things that I'd built, adding them to the overall build of the Nasutoceratops building, is all the groups for the props broke down and became individual pieces, which was a real pain to select and collect all in a group and move it as a group. For So... What I ended up doing was just deleting it all. You saw that as it went by. And speaking of deleting, I also ended up decided, deciding to delete the wall uh, cladding that's on the, um, the entrance side, animal entrance side of the Nasutoceratops uh, building. Uh, you'll watch me struggle trying to replace it on this one. Eventually I decided that, you know, nobody can see this entrance. There's going to be no way in the zoo that the visitors will have access to it. So why would the zoo spend money on cladding this just for looks? So 
eventually I will give up and just take it all out and rely only on the um, the ivy to break up that vast expanse of gray cinder blocks. Overall, definitely, I am not building uh, smarter on this one. I'm building harder. Uh, I probably should have just built the building from scratch using the same colors and materials. It probably would have been just a whole lot easier. So you get to see me being stupid. Uh, and not uh, doing what uh, I should be doing. Uh, maybe it'll be a lesson. Who knows? And the building, obviously, I decided to make even bigger than originally when I gave a thought to how big those hadrosaurs are. And uh, still continued to struggle with that uh, off-centered grid. The hadrosaurs that uh, I'll be putting in uh, are um, the Lambiosaurus and the Parasaurolophus walkeri. Uh, these animals are contemporaries and they come from, I believe it's the Dinosaur Park Formation. Excuse me, the Dinosaur Park Formation in Alberta. So, um, we're almost up to the part where I build the transfer pen. Uh, my idea was to try out some of the pieces and see what I could do to build something to look like one of those places where they would isolate an animal from the general population of the exhibit and get it into a uh, crate or a truck to move it somewhere for whatever reason, whether that means going to the vet or uh, going to another zoo. Here's the, the enclosure. Uh, this was kind of the last straw for me on building on the the not grid, sort of, and uh, I gave up on it. And now we're into the that little tour section. And you can see the structure of the fence is a little more elaborate, and I built a pulley cable system to drag that heavy gate uh, out of the way for people to get in or to back the truck up to to put the hadrosaur in. Uh, there is a control system, which we're zooming in on. There's a open and close button, and then the little dark bit there was where they would use the control to activate the system. The wheel would be a mechanical uh, device to crank the gate open and uh, emergency system. A second system to open the other gate uh, in the pen and surrounded by rocks to keep the animals from getting to it or the people operating it. So, there it is. And uh, we can shortly... Oh, wait. Before we go, I'm going to grab a hadrosaur and show you that it's big enough to deal with the animals or an animal at a time. And that's something a prehistoric kingdom would probably have to do with the really big animals. You're not going to transfer more than one at a time uh, very easily uh, unless you have some kind of, uh, I don't know, dino cattle drive kind of thing going when the zoo is closed. Uh, that still doesn't seem terribly practical with such enormous animals. And uh, anyway. So uh, after this we're going to go back to a couple of fast bills, throwing in some animal care uh, stuff, the very basics, just to uh, get it started. Uh, the first will be dropping in a feeding uh, tray for animals and then putting in some bedding in the building. As you've already seen on the video, I had a couple of escapees and that meant there was a way for them to get out. So I needed to check it and look for places where they could get out and prevent that, which resulted in some more rock work and uh, that also uh, had me set up the area where you already saw near the holding pen that I had put rocks. I needed to make sure they wouldn't come down uh, from that slope and get onto the access trail into the uh, holding area for the animals. Uh, the holding area, the... Ah, not at my best today. Sorry, sorry folks. Um, the uh, care area for the animals 
I really love the being able to resize the rocks and colorize them as needed rather than having to hunt through a library of the very same rocks in a slightly different color. Um, that's nice, and being able to make one rock do a better job. Anyway, one of the things I discovered and when I checked it was I now needed more power in the zoo, which is pretty standard. And I decided to put in a wind turbine up nearby on this elevated platform. And upon checking it again, I discovered one was not enough. Uh, so I also needed to make sure the animals couldn't get to them. We don't want them knocking it over. And then the staff needs to get to them to be able to service them and make sure they're running properly. So it was time to build a little stairway up to the elevated area where those wind turbines are. I uh, decided to do wood stairs and platforms and such like to, uh, you know, probably, you know, relatively cheap to build and uh, not terribly fancy. It's good enough for staff. Very carbon, uh, open to the public facility kind of thing. It's just not as fancy for the staff as it is for the guests. So little fussy work with the terrain to make it behave and, and show that stuff. The, the brushes only get so small for doing some tight work, and uh, I really wish we had a little more, uh, a little more control at the finer levels in this game. I understand the park's very big, and you often want to terraform a huge amount of territory, but on the whole, when I'm fiddling with things, I find I spend more time on the small stuff than the big parts of the park, and it's not really all that bad to uh, transfer to uh, terraform large parts of the park a bit at a time, uh, but not being able to control the terrain at these smaller uh, sizes and in these tighter spaces is uh, extremely frustrating sometimes. So with uh, the slight adjustment of the building's position, of course the rocks had to be adjusted as well, and I caught the fact that my cables weren't long enough to reach the gate itself. Uh, so I had to fix that. And now we're into some cinematics. You heard a little bit of music there. I'll save you from that in the rest of the ones. And uh, a little check of how the hall looks night and day. Um, and overall, looks pretty good, I think. Um, reasonably happy with it. And time to pay attention to animals because we're coming in toward the end of this video and just a minute or so left and so time for things like looking at the animals so looking at the animals walk away that was not really what i had in mind when i dropped them in there but that's what they did the parasaurolophus crew was a little bit uh, more cooperative when i drop them down, at least some of them came toward the camera. Um, and after they were down and started wandering around a bit, things got a little bit nicer to see them. They got a little more acclimated to it, I guess. At least that's what I can tell myself. Enough so that uh, they just lie down in the water and chill. Yeah, chill, boy. I like this guy. I like this skin. The, the pattering on it is just very nicely done. So, uh, anyway, uh, our hadrosaur exhibit is finished. And uh, I will be back eventually with some more. And this is being recorded way far in advance right now because of real life issues and time availabilities. But you may see some interim videos or have seen some interim videos by the time you see this. Take care. Be nice to each other. Dinobob signing out.